Okay, I'm going to show you how to factory reset the TLWPA4220. Now you can buy these separately, which I've done, but you can also get them as part of a kit, and that's the most common way of getting these. Normally the kit is like that. There's the larger TLWPA4220 there, and the smaller TLPA4010 that you get in the kit, and that's a power line network. The smaller device will plug directly into your home network router, such as your broadband router, and the larger device you'll plug somewhere else in the house where you need to have better Wi-Fi. So for me, that's my setup. Down the bottom left is my broadband router, and I've connected the TLPA4010 directly using an Ethernet cable. That's that symbol with the two greater than, less than, and dots. And that plus the first WPA4220 was part of the kit. And I've bought two more WPA4220s, which I'm going to connect to the existing power line. Okay. So everything is factory default. I haven't changed any settings and it works right away. It's very clever like that. But you may want to factory reset those one day if you've made lots of configuration changes or you're not completely sure it's working or you've changed networks in any way. It's quite simple. You'll plug it into your network and you'll press something into the little dot at the bottom there. And I've got this hair comb pin thing here, which will just go in there. But I need to plug it into the network first. So I'm going to use this power pack here. Okay, so I've just plugged that in. Now I'm going to do a factory reset. I'm going to push this pin, the little hole there, for five seconds. On this image, you can see that's the little hole just down there. So one cat and dog, two cat and dog, three cat and dog, four cat and dog five cat and dog after about five seconds the lights will switch out and it'll reboot in factory default settings now that means that the ssid and the password on this sticker are now how you can connect to this device i can see that the lights are back on now so i can connect to that using my mobile phone and have extended wi-fi throughout my house like this but the wi-fi ssid doesn't match the home router's SSID. I've already configured the other two WPA4220s to match that. Now it's optional if you want to do that or not. Personally I find if they use different SSIDs and passwords the whole network overall is more reliable but it just takes a little bit more work to connect your mobile phone as you walk around the house. So a lot of people prefer to have them all transmitting the same SSID and password. To do that we're going to need to know what the IP address is of that once it was plugged into the electricity network like that. My home router is a DHCP router, so it's given it an IP address already. Most routers in your homes are DHCP routers. You plug something into the network and you'll get an IP address assigned. But you don't know what that IP address is often, so the best way to find out is to log into your router and find out what IP address it has assigned to that new device. For me, my home router's IP address is 192.168.1.1. For you, it might be something else. It might be 1.254 or something else. To find out if you don't know, you can usually open up a Windows command prompt and type IP config. And down here it says default gateway. That's the IP address that you want for your home router. So mine is that IP address. I'm there already. I'm going to log in. Your home router's user interface is likely to be different than mine. My router is also a TP link product, so that's why it looks like this. But once I've logged in, I'm looking for this new device on the network. On my user interface, I can press this icon here, Wired Clients. I can see now that there's a new device added to my network, and that's this bottom one here, number four. For you, it's going to be different, but I know it's this one because I was logged on before, and these already existed. So this is the new IP address that my device was assigned. So I'm going to type that in to the browser, and the default password is admin. Now, this is the administration page for this device here. I just got the IP address using the administration page of my main router there. It is also a TP-Link product. That's why it looks relatively similar, but it is a different device. So here I'm connected to the 4220, whereas my main router is a different product called Narcha MR600. Your home router is going to be different than mine, most likely. But it will have a page on it somewhere where you can see what is connected to the network. Okay, so once I'm connected to the admin page of the extender, the WPA4220, I can change its wireless settings from the default factory settings to match my home network settings. And it will then broadcast the same SSID and password as all the other devices on my network. Now, that is optional. It's not absolutely necessary to do that. You can continue to have it broadcasting the same default SSID and password in the factory reset. It will still work. It actually works pretty well. These things are plug and play. 
Okay, so I've just updated the SSID and password of my new extender there. Continue, saved. And now I'm able to unplug it like so and plug it into the area of my house where I'm going to use it, where I need the Wi-Fi to be extended. So on my little picture down here, this one's going downstairs in another room. Okay, so excellent. I can refresh the view and I can see that the device is still connected using that IP address. Okay, so remember factory resets can be done for many reasons and it's that easy. You have the option whether to use the default SSID and password or to modify it to match the same SSID and password used by your main network router. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share.